This is the Bay of Marathon on the eastern coast of Greece. I'm Matthew Settle. Over 2,000 years ago, in September 490 BC, 600 ships lay the entire length of this shoreline, while an army of 30,000 Persian invaders raced up the beach. Sua missão: capturar Atenas e conquistar a Grécia para o Império de Dario, o rei da Pérsia. But 11,000 Greek infantrymen stood in their way here at Marathon. Hoje, com a tecnologia dos videogames, podemos visualizar como foi a batalha, o grande número de soldados, a formação das tropas em combate e como a vitória foi alcançada. Veja o que os generais gostariam de ter testemunhado agora em Batalhas Decisivas. Batalhas Decisivas This is the burial mound of Marathon. Beneath me lie the remains of Greek soldiers who died in battle on 9/11, 490 BC. Naquele tempo, a Grécia não era unificada. Era um conjunto de cidades-estado independentes, cujos centros eram Atenas, Corinto, Esparta. Cada cidade tinha suas leis e sistema de governo, mas a cidade mais influente era Atenas. 20 years earlier, the Athenians had gotten rid of their king, Hippias, who was a cruel and brutal ruler. Athens became a democracy and began to flex its muscle against Persia, the greatest power in the Mediterranean at the time. Os atenienses apoiaram revoltas nas ilhas, as que tentavam se livrar do jugo persa. The Persians saw themselves having a God-given right to rule the world, and they expanded in every direction. They probably expected most countries and nations that they encountered to simply surrender. The procedure of declaring war was, in fact, in fact, to demand a surrender, and if that wasn't then given, they would they would fight. The Persian king Darius became furious with the Athenians. He decided that when the time was right, not only would he conquer Athens, but all of Greece. Darius had a servant. Every time he sat down to dinner before he would eat, the servant would whisper in his ear, "Sire, do not forget the Athenians." Quando o deposto rei Ípias fugiu de Atenas para a Pérsia, foi recebido como um amigo. I think it would be fair to regard Hippias essentially as a political pawn. The Persians weren't really too concerned what type of regime they would set up in conquered territory, so long as they were confident that he would be loyal to them. Em 491 antes de Cristo, Dario envia emissários a Atenas e Esparta, exigindo terras e água em reconhecimento do poder da Pérsia. Os gregos atiraram os emissários por um precipício e Esparta atirou os outros dois em um poço. The Greeks most hated was the idea of slavery, of not being free, and they were determined not to allow themselves to be taken over by a foreign power without a fight. Dario ficou furioso. Reuniu uma frota de 600 navios e mobilizou seu exército. Ao partir para a Grécia, o rei exilado Ípias foi com ele. A força de invasão de 30 mil homens era comandada por Dates, o comandante das forças do Oeste. Ípias informou que o local ideal para o desembarque era a vasta praia de Maratona. The Persians had very consciously picked a place that suited the kinds of forces that they had. Basically, within the territory of Athens, they couldn't have found pretty much a better place for them to land. This is the plain of Marathon, six miles long and two miles broad. Apart from the marshes at either end, it's an unbroken plain, perfect for the battle tactics of the Persians with their light infantry and cavalry. Mesmo no começo de setembro, esses brejos são fundos e traiçoeiros. Um homem não caminha ali e dirá milhares de cavalos. Hippias did not have a happy homecoming. As he jumped ashore, he had a coughing fit and spat out a tooth. When he looked for it in the sand, he couldn't find it, and he took this as a sign from the gods that he would not regain his kingdom. Enquanto Dates desembarcava seus homens, o exército grego se reunia nas montanhas de Maratona, perto da praia. O exército de Atenas era composto de várias tribos locais. 
eram mil homens de onze tribos diferentes, cada uma com seu próprio general, todos comandados por um general grego, Miltiades. Missing from these 11,000 men, with the fiercest and most feared Greek fighting force, the Spartans. Miltiades enviou Feitípedes a Esparta para pedir ajuda. The Greeks generally used runners as messengers, sometimes horsemen, but very often runners, partly perhaps due to the rough terrain that they often had to negotiate. Feitípedes era um corredor. Ele podia correr o dia todo, levando mensagens. De acordo com o historiador Heródoto, ele correu 240 quilômetros entre Esparta e Atenas em dois dias. Mas sua corrida épica foi em vão. Os espartanos estavam celebrando um feriado religioso e se recusaram a marchar até depois da lua cheia. Os espartanos eram notoriously pious, notoriously slow, notoriously tardy, and, I, and, and arrogant in a way. And I think they felt, oh, we'll just get over there when we get there. Atenas estaria só. A situação de Miltiades não era boa. We know very little about this Greek commander. He was from a leading family in Athens and must have had considerable military experience to win command of the army. But we may have one link that stretches back two and a half thousand years. Esta é uma réplica exata de um capacete encontrado pelos arqueólogos. É do período da batalha e tem a inscrição: Miltiades dedicou este capacete a Zeus. É bem provável que este seja o capacete de Miltiades, pois era do tipo que os gregos usaram em maratona. O exército grego usava homens de infantaria, os oplitas, assim chamados por causa de seu escudo, chamado oplon. Os oplitas lutavam em formação de falange, uma parede quase inexpugnável de homens e escudos que avançava continuamente. The shield of the hoplite was a big shield, about a meter wide, but it covered only half the body, and therefore the protection comes from the overlapping of each shield with the man next to him. Das montanhas ao longe de Maratona, Miltiades e seus dez generais tinham uma visão clara da organização do exército persa. Era um exército duas vezes maior que o grego. Com arqueiros da Etiópia, espadachins indianos, cavaleiros das estepes da Ásia. Apesar de todos serem súditos do rei Dario da Pérsia, não tinham nada em comum, nem mesmo uma língua. Por outro lado, os gregos eram vizinhos e lutariam ombro a ombro para salvar sua independência e seu estilo de vida. Memories of the tyrant Hippias were fresh in their minds, and death was preferable to him regaining the Athenian crown. But neither side seemed eager for a fight. Por quatro dias, os exércitos ficaram de frente em espera nervosa. One reason why the Greeks waited is simply that uh, they were in a very strong position there. They could not, as such, be forced. And the Persians, being so much larger, had a supply problem. And therefore, it was quite likely that supplies would run low and that they might even consider retiring. Dates não atacou porque esperava que os atenienses, ainda fiéis a Ípias, se levantassem e tomassem o controle de Atenas. Do lado grego, Miltiades não atacou porque esperava receber o reforço do prometido contingente de Esparta. Nenhum dos lados se mexeu. But in the Persian camp, Datis was hatching a daring battle plan that would break the deadlock. Soon the killing and fighting would begin. Four days of stalemate, the Persian commander Datis decided to gamble everything on a quick victory. Cover of darkness, he loaded all of his cavalry and some of his infantry back onto his ships. Enquanto o exército de Atenas estava em maratona, navegaria pela costa, desembarcaria suas tropas e atacaria a desprotegida Atenas. 
Seu fiel general, Artafernes, ficaria em maratona com uma força de 12 mil homens. If Datus thought he could load thousands of horses and men onto his ships and sail quietly away into the night, he was very much mistaken. Miltiades scouts uncovered the ruse. The Greeks consequently realized here is a danger and an opportunity. The danger is if we don't act now, the city will be captured behind our backs. The opportunity is we can march down into the plain now and take them on because they won't have time to unship their cavalry again. Miltiades percebeu que devia agir depressa. Dates levaria mais de 10 horas para zarpar para Atenas e outras tantas horas para desembarcar seu exército. Miltiades tinha de vencer rapidamente em maratona e correr para Atenas para enfrentar Dates. What they did was seize what the Greeks called kairos. They had a word meaning opportunity, the opportune moment. And I think the genius of Miltiades is indeed largely responsible for their choosing the right moment. Miltiades preparou seus 11 mil oplitas para a luta. Teria formado uma falange retangular, mas ficou preocupado pelo comprimento da linha inimiga. Os persas poderiam avançar pelos lados e cercar os gregos. Sabemos desses detalhes por dois historiadores gregos. Heródoto, que escreveu sobre a batalha pouco tempo depois de ela acontecer, e Plutarco, que escreveu 400 anos depois, mas usou o material de outros historiadores. Miltiades took a huge risk and tore up the battle manual. He abandoned the traditional phalanx formation and deployed his troops along the widest possible front, so that the center of the line was much thinner than usual. Four men deep, as opposed to the customary eight. But on each wing, he retained the eight ranks of the conventional phalanx. He wanted to protect his flanks. The Greek heavily armored infantry, they had a, you know, a three-foot shield that would cover them from, from brow to knee, greaves down, down here on the shin guards, and then a helmet with just eye slits, so that when they put that helmet at the rim of the shield, uh, they really were pretty much invulnerable. Enquanto o exército grego avançava, Miltiades pensava no próximo problema. As fileiras maciças de arqueiros persas, mortais a até quase 300 metros. Os gregos deveriam correr essa distância final ou seriam massacrados. They marched forward at a sedate pace, the usual sedate pace of a hoplite army advancing, until they came within bow shot which is maybe a hundred yards or so. Alcançada essa distância, começou a saraivada de flechas. Quando as tropas de Miltiades se puseram a correr, os persas ficaram atônitos, porque, por natureza, uma falange avançava lentamente. Os Persian archers would have posed a very serious threat to the Hoplite force. Uh, they had very powerful bows and large arrows that could have done serious damage. Imagine-se com uma armadura, com um escudo pesado, uma lança e uma espada. Tudo pesando 30 quilos, tendo de correr até o inimigo e chegando lá, lutar ferozmente com ele. There was a British historian who actually built himself a suit of hoplite armor and went to marathon and ran from approximately the place where the Athenian camp was to the site of the battle um, and showed that a fit man could actually run that distance in armor. Os oplitas treinavam duro para isso. Havia mesmo um evento nos Jogos Olímpicos que consistia de uma corrida de 400 metros com o uniforme oplita completo. Os persas ficaram perplexos. De suas posições, podiam ver o centro da linha grega correndo para cima deles. Só esperavam que chegassem sem fôlego para a luta. Os persas não eram uma infantaria pesada. Com armamento leve, lanças curtas e cimitarras, eles se alinharam para repelir as lanças dos gregos. Os dois exércitos se encontraram. Os persas viram que suas armas eram inferiores às gregas, mas lutaram bravamente. E como eram mais numerosos, começaram a fazer os gregos recuarem. A prática de Miltiades parecia ter falhado, e enquanto isso, Dates se aproximava de Atenas. 
Ao ver o centro da linha grega recuar, o comandante persa, Artafernes, sentiu a vitória. The way in which Miltiades drew out the Athenian army, enormously lengthening and thinning his center, was one of the riskiest things, I think, in all of ancient warfare. As laterais da falange grega começaram a empurrar as laterais da linha persa para o centro. Cada ponta foi se movendo ao mesmo tempo, girando para a esquerda ou para a direita, fechando um círculo. Ao final, a tática de Miltiades deu resultado. O centro da linha persa caiu e ela lentamente foi cercada pelo inimigo. Foi uma carnificina, pois o eficiente armamento grego se abateu sobre o inimigo. And then that whole center of the Persian army became essentially a killing zone. Certainly, to fight that way took uh, uh, great strength and great endurance. And you haven't even talked about the heat of the of the summer. Os persas continuaram a se atirar sobre a falange inimiga, procurando desesperadamente quebrá-la. Enquanto isso, os arqueiros persas faziam chover milhares de flechas sobre os gregos, agora tão juntos dos persas que os arqueiros corriam o risco de matar seus próprios soldados. Os gregos perceberam isso e lutaram como homens possessos. were not so important in those days. It was more just the guts to stand next shoulder to shoulder with your mates and and uh, and carry on the fight. Os persas estavam batidos. Nunca haviam sido vencidos pelos gregos, mas agora milhares de seus soldados estavam mortos ou morrendo. De repente, os persas se dispersaram e correram para seus navios para escapar da morte. Os gregos tentaram impedir sua fuga e os perseguiram até a orla marítima. There was chaos on the beach. The stampeding troops pushing and heaving to get their craft away, while trying to defend themselves from the pursuing hoplites. The surviving Persians sailed away, while the Greeks collapsed. Exhausted in the sand. Mas não havia tempo para descansar. Enquanto a batalha acontecia em Maratona, Dates e suas tropas estavam perto de Atenas. Miltiades ordenou que suas tropas marchassem para Atenas, uma marcha forçada de 35 quilômetros com o uniforme completo. Ele levou três horas para derrotar os persas em Maratona. Mas isso deixava Dates três horas mais perto de Atenas. Era uma corrida contra o tempo. He sent a runner on ahead with news of victory. According to legend, it was Phidippides, the same man who had run to Sparta. He ran the 22 miles here to Athens and shouted, "Rejoice! We have victory!" Then fell dead from exhaustion. Miltiades arrived in the nick of time and managed to set his troops up around Athens. Datis was dismayed when he sailed around the bay and found the Greek army waiting for him. When they saw those Athenians waiting for them, they just didn't have the heart to have another go at these guys who had just inflicted this disastrous defeat on them. Datis nem desembarcou. Ele achava que essas tropas tivessem sido derrotadas em Maratona. Mas elas estavam aqui para lutar de novo. Knowledging defeat, he turned his ships around and set course for Persia. Hippias had guessed right. Not only had he lost his tooth, but any chance of ever regaining his kingdom. E os espartanos chegaram atrasados e perderam uma chance de glória. Mas estavam curiosos para ver como era um guerreiro persa. Saíram de Atenas e foram ver os mortos. They say that the Spartans were sort of like sightseers toured the battle afterwards and that they were pretty shaken up to see what great work their rival Athenians had done. I think it really did eat at the Spartans' guts that these foppish Athenians had polished off the Persians. If the Persians had won the battle and had occupied Athens, they would then have had a, a basis in mainland Greece for further campaigns and that might well have changed the course of history. Marathon was a true battle, a real battle that was decisive and that threw back an invading enemy. The 
fame of Marathon is, in my view, imperishable. It was an extraordinary victory. But for Marathon, you wouldn't then have had the ensuing civilization of the Greeks. Os persas perderam 6.500 homens e os gregos 192. This was a great victory for Greece, but an even greater victory for Athens. In the space of 20 years, its citizens had got rid of their king and pushed back the Persian Empire. In the process, they had created a new form of government. They called it democratia. We call it democracy. And Pheidippides, his run is remembered at every Olympics. And each year in cities around the world, when ordinary people run, the marathon.